Our deliverance amidst calamities is guaranteed in God's word and his instructions. Today on Fresh Dew, Pastor Kichi continues her classic message, Unveiling Psalm 91. Part 4. You are no longer in the kingdom where the influence of those buried things are operating. You are now in the kingdom that is under the influence of the word of God. Don't you understand this? That God has changed your location at salvation and he has moved you aside. So while people are running around ancestral curses and running around buried things and running around lineage and generational curses and all that nonsense, I'm running around the word of God and I recognize that my location has been changed. Sword teaching seminar with Pastor Nkechi Ene. You've got to understand that your name is in the finished job report of Jesus. When he said it is finished, he referred to you. On Thursday the 19th, Friday the 20th, and Sunday the 22nd of March 2020 at 6 p.m. on Thursday and Friday and 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. on Sunday at the Carpenters Church Greenville of Ajipo Iwafe Road, Malfo, Rumeme, Port Harcourt. We'll take you this way till you get to the School of Christ where you learn that you can only be justified by faith and the law itself cannot justify you. Makairo moments. You don't want to miss this. Unveiling Psalm 91. Unveiling Psalm 91. I'll read the text. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. This psalm is one of my most favorite psalms, and we've been unveiling Psalm 91. So today we're going to start from verse 4. We have been looking at verses 1 to 3 before now. So I'll read verse 4 again. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. We see here that the psalmist is choosing to stay with the picture of a bird that we started with in verse 3. So he's, he's now beginning to look at God as the parent bird. We were the birds that the fowler was setting traps for. The fowler represented the enemy. But now in verse 4, he's beginning to tell us that we may have had the fowler come after us with traps, but we have a parent bird who is there to take care of us. So I'll read it from the King James Version. It says, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. Under his wings shall thou trust. So to cover means to hedge in, to block, to screen, 
to protect, to defend, to stop the approach, to stop the approach. So we're, we're seeing in this, in this verse, God as the parent bird, we are the young ones, the fowler was coming after us, but then we have a parent bird who is there to protect us and take care of us. Now we're going to look at two major ways in which a parent bird takes care of their young ones. And we're going to see from the scriptures that God takes care of us in pretty much the same ways, two major ways. In one, the first one, we're going to look at the hen, for example. So the hen shelters its own beneath its wings. So we can look at God as our father, sheltering his own beneath the cover or beneath the shadow of his wings. So the, he the hen spreads out her wings and you know, shelters her chicks from danger. She doesn't necessarily live where she is, but she goes and she protects the chicks. And she's saying to the enemy who's trying to come and set traps for her children that before you can get to these children, you have to get to me first. Well, we have a father who has very big wings and he has feathers. And the Bible shows us that he takes us under the cover of his wings and under the cover of his feathers. Look at Psalm 17 and verse 8. It says, keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Keep me as the apple of your eye. So the first part of that verse shows us that he's doing what he's doing because he loves us. He's doing what he's doing out of tenderness and care for his children. He's not taking us under the shadow of his wings because, you know, he's angry with us and he's cursing and saying, you know, you this silly children, like some parents do, you these lousy children, come on, come inside. Do you want the enemy to get you? No. Instead, he says, come, I want to love you. Come, I want to protect you. I want to care for you. And he takes us just like the way the hen takes her chicks. He takes us under the shadow of his wings because we are the apple of his eye, because we're the apple of his eye. And so we begin to see there that the, the young ones don't necessarily go under the shadow of their mother's wings because they're afraid. So our place under the, the shadow of God's wings it's not a place we go to because we're afraid. It's a place we go to because it's our rightful place. It's our covenant right to be under the shadow of his wings. It's our covenant right to be taken care of by our father. It's our covenant right to have his soft feathers protect us and hedge us in and block and screen the enemy from us and stop the approach of the enemy from, you know, stop the enemy from getting to us. So, you know, when we think of protection and many of us, like we said at the beginning of this message um, in part one, many of us treat this psalm like a magical psalm. You know, when you're afraid, you run, oh, what does Psalm 91 say? Let me run under the shadow of his wings. No, I'll go under the shadow of his wings when I'm in faith. I'll go under the shadow of his wings when there's nothing coming against me. I'll go under the shadow of his wings because that is my rightful place. And I'm not going to give up my rightful place. My father has wings and he has feathers and I'm going to come under the shadow of his wings. Let me show you something very interesting in Psalm 36 and I'll read from the NIV Psalm 36 how priceless is your unfailing love we see again it's a function of his love how priceless is your unfailing love both high and low among men find refuge in the shadow of your wings how priceless is your unfailing love both high and low among men find refuge in the shadow of your wings look at verse 8 they feast on the abundance of your house. You give them drink from your river of delight. They feast from the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delight. So we see there that again, this is just like we found out in Psalm 3, I in verse 3, I believe. We talked about the perilous pestilence being the plague. And we found out that the plague was no respecter of persons. The plague will come against the high and it will come against the low. Remember when the plagues came against Egypt, Pharaoh had his firstborn killed, the firstborn of the cattle, the firstborn of the slaves. They were all, you know hit by the plague so the plague is no respecter of persons in the same way the protection of god is no respecter of persons it says both high and low come under the shadow of his wings so when you go under the shadow of his wings don't be surprised to find your your pastor there don't be surprised to find a very spiritual person there don't be surprised to find you know somebody who's very mature there and you say oh i thought you were you know you were a very mature person what are you doing here no it says both high and low come under the shadow of his wings both high and low come under the shadow of his wings it says they feast on the abundance of your house and you give them drink from your river of delight 
So it doesn't even matter how much you think you have attained, how much you think you have. God says to tell you that when you come under the shadow of my wings, there is so much abundance there. And anything you think you have tasted pales into insignificance when you taste the abundance that is under the shadow of my wings. When you taste the abundance that is under the shadow of my wings. I told you that there were two main ways in which the parent bird takes care of her young. And we're going to look at the second way so the first example we looked at the hen and the chick now let's look at the eagle and look at an example with the eagle and i'll show you the second major way in which a parent bird takes care of its young deuteronomy and chapter 32 i'll read verse 11 as an eagle stirs up its nest hovers over its young spreading out its wings taking them up carrying them on its wings so the lord alone led him and there was no foreign god with him he made them ride in the heights of the earth, that he might eat the produce of the field. He made him to draw honey from the rock and oil from the flinty rock, curds from the cattle and milk of the flock with fat of lambs and rams of the breed of Bashan and goats with the choicest wheat. And you drank wine and the blood of grapes. Look at that. Look, look at verse 11 again. It says, as an eagle stirs up its nest, hovers over its youngs, spreading out its wings. Get this, taking them up, carrying them on its wings. Taking them up, carrying them on its wings. So the first way we said a parent bird takes care of its young ones is by staying right there in the same location and covering them. But the second way is this, a parent bird can pick up its young ones and change location entirely from where the danger is. Can pick up its young ones and change the location of its young ones entirely. And the eagle is a good example. And I tell you, God takes care of us in pretty much the same way. Many times God may minister to you and say, you know, I want you to stop and come down from this vehicle now and leave this vehicle and you're like well lord you know why should i do that but you have a strong witness in your heart or and and you know and you come down and you know you know you 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 leave the vehicle and just later on you find out that there was some terrible accident or something really horrible happened and you know you could have been there what happened the parent bird came and he changed your location from where the danger was he changed your location from where the danger was well somebody says why would god do that isn't God, you know, afraid that somebody will think God is afraid of the danger. That's why God ran away. Isn't God afraid that somebody will think this eagle is picking up its young and running away from the point of danger? Well, let me say this. God doesn't need to prove his abilities to anybody. God doesn't need to prove his power to anybody. He has proved his power in creation. He has proved his abilities and his power in the salvation plan. And God is not nervous about his abilities. And if the wisdom of God dictates that sometimes he will stay right where you are and cover you, so some other times he will change your location then let the wisdom of God be the wisdom of God but sometimes God will change your location and God is not afraid of what somebody might think or you know what somebody else might might not think so God sometimes changes your location and you see why he does this it's very thrilling to him because when the enemy has set his plan and has made you a target for what he wants to do when God has changed your location and removed you from there it can be very frustrating to the enemy can you imagine somebody who has hatched up a terrible plan for you and by the time he comes and comes to face you you are not there anymore you're not there anymore and many times I imagine the Lord leaning back and having a good laugh at the enemy having thrown a missile at one of his children and oops by the time he gets there his child has been relocated Remember, it says the eagle picks up its young and sets him upon the rock, sets him upon the rock, sets him in an inaccessible place, sets him in a place where danger cannot get to him. Let me read something to you from Psalm 2. I want to read something to you from Psalm 2. And one day I'll preach a message on Psalm 2 from uh, on Fresh Dew. Look at what Psalm 2 says. It says, why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel, watch this, take counsel against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. So you see, plans are being made for the Lord and for his anointed, you and I. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. That's what I just told you. He shall laugh. That's referring to God. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Why does he do that? Look at verse 5. 
then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. That is why he can laugh. That is why he can look back and, you know, look down and laugh at what the kings of the earth have said against you. Because he has moved ahead of them and he has moved you to the holy hill of Zion and he knows that whatever conferences the enemy is having against the Lord and against his anointed shall come to naught. The Bible says they imagine a vain thing. It says they shall be worthless. There's nothing shall come out of the plan of the enemy. Why? Because your parent bird has changed your location. He has changed your location. You know, many times when you listen to the word of God or you read, read the word of God and you find out that you should speak the word of God, you shall have what you say. You should confess the word of God. By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. He sent forth his word and healed me and delivered me from destruction and all of that. When you need to speak the word of God, you might say, well, I don't feel any symptom in my body. So, you know, I'll, I'll just get around doing other things. Listen to me. When you speak the word of God, you are changing your location experientially. You are changing your location. And when the enemy comes and maybe tries to throw a target of a missile of tuberculosis or something against you, when that tuberculosis comes and hits you, what it actually hits is by his stripes I am healed. And as it were, you have changed your location and you're not there anymore and God has moved you. God came ahead of time and he prepared you from, for whatever it was the enemy was going to try and you know come against you with and your location has changed and it is so frustrating for the enemy. It is so frustrating for the enemy when that happens and God sits back and laughs and his children sit back and laugh from the rock and they look down and they say, oh, you thought you could get us. No, our father translated us and our father moved us away. You know, there's something that is very predominant now in the body of Christ. And I'll give that as another example of how God protects us by changing our location. You know, now in the body of Christ, you hear people talking about, you know, ancestral curses and breaking, you know, ancestral curses that have been brought upon you by your great grandfather and how your grandmother was a witch and how, you know, they said that the you know, this will happen in three generations from her line and blah, blah, blah. And men of God go into your villages and they begin to uproot trees and they, they become farmers and begin to dig up stones and dig up rocks and dig up umbilical cords that were buried there many years ago, etc., etc., etc. Well, let me say this to you. I'm not here to dispute whether your grandmother was a witch. I'm not here to even say whether there was a curse on your ancestral line or not. I'm not even here to argue with you whether some of your hair was cut off and buried on a mango tree three miles northeast of your village. I'm not here to argue about that. What I'm here to tell you is that your father has changed your location from all those things. So those things might be there, but you're no longer there. You're not there anymore. And you must understand that child of God. No wonder the Bible says in Colossians 1 and verse 13, my favorite, one of my most favorite verses of scripture, it says, it says that he has delivered you from the powers of darkness and he has translated you into the kingdom of his dear son. He has delivered you from the powers of darkness and he has changed your location into the kingdom of his dear son. So you are no longer in the kingdom where those ancestral curses are operating. You are no longer in the kingdom where the influence of those buried things are operating. You are now in the kingdom that is under the influence of the word of God. Don't you understand this, that God has changed your location at salvation and he has moved you aside so while people are running around ancestral curses and running around buried things and running around lineage and generational curses and all that nonsense I'm running around the word of God and I recognize that my location has been changed I recognize that pa father eagle came and picked me up and set me upon his holy hill of Zion and now we can look back and we can look at all those things that were buried and we can look at all those ancestral curses and truly they may be there and they are hovering, hovering around in my village but you see I'm no longer there and that is why it is so frustrating when people expect certain things to happen to you because that is what happens to people from your place or that is what happens you know in your family line but then they watch you child of God they watch you the anointed one they watch you the one under the influence of God and they are so frustrated because they cannot understand why things are different with you well look them in the eyes and tell them that things are different with you now because God has 
has changed your location. Things are different with you now because God relocated you. Things are different with you now because God has translated you. And the things that hold them captive don't hold you captive anymore. The things that cause them to be afraid don't cause you to be afraid anymore. You don't go to God because you're afraid. You go to him because that is where you belong in the kingdom of his dear son. And in the kingdom of his dear son, there are no ancestral curses operating. In the kingdom of his dear son, there are no witches and wizards operating. In the kingdom of his dear son, there are no birds and bats and things that were buried under trees a million years ago operating. No, in the kingdom of his dear son, the influence of his word is what comes upon those who are in the kingdom of his dear son. Hallelujah. So the eagle comes and relocates his young. And you must understand that child of God, that God changes your location he takes you in love and care under the shadow of his wings and he takes you to the high place he takes you to the high place so you see i said he does this for two reasons he does this to frustrate the enemy and the second reason he does this it is this develops a relationship he has the, the relationship he has already with you. You see, you begin to become sensitive. You are in a place and God begins to minister to you and you begin to know the voice of God. And God begins to tell you, my son, I want you to go to that bank and move your money from that bank. And you say, well, Lord, why should I move my money from that bank? My first cousin is the chairman of the bank. And he says to you, my son, I say to you yet again, take your money and move your money from that bank. And you say, yes, father, I'll do just what you say. And everybody else may say to you, are you mad? Why are you moving? your money from that bank you say well my father has told me to do that and you go and you move all your money to a bank that nobody seems to even know of and three weeks or four weeks after you've done that the bank goes distressed and you lift up your hands and you praise God and you say my father relocated me my father relocated my money father ego moved me to a high place father ego moved me upon the rock and upon the rock there's abundance and there's plenty and other people who may not have discerned the voice of the Lord people who were even Christians the money could have been trapped up there so you see this these are different ways in which God does this and he, he it breeds sensitivity and your relationship begins to be developed more and more and more with him let me show you something really sweet in 2nd Kings chapter 6 and we'll we'll close with this let me show you something in 2nd Kings chapter 6 now the king of Syria was making war against Israel and he consulted with his servants saying my camp will be in such and such a place and the man of God sent to the king of Israel saying beware that you do not pass this place for the Syrians are coming down there did you hear that did you hear that the man of God sent to the king of Israel beware that you do not pass this place so change your location this is where you would have passed but but listen the king of Syria has a plan but then you see God has his ears in the bedroom of the enemy me. And he says, the king of Syria has a plan, so move and move. Do not pass this place. Let me go back to my, my text. Verse 10. Then the king of Israel sent someone to the place of which the man of God had told him. Thus he warned him, and he was watchful there, not just once or twice. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was greatly troubled, frustrated is my own version, and, tr and, and distressed and really upset. He was greatly troubled by this thing. And he called his servants and said to them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? He thought he had a spy. And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your, in your bedroom. Let me say this to you, to you, child of God. The word of God is a leak in the enemy plans the word of God is the cronje that you need the word of God is what tells you how to relocate yourself and position yourself rightly to be protected by your father he says the king of Syria was greatly troubled he was frustrated what is going on each time I make a plan each time I make a plan by the time we get to that place we find out that Israel is not there anymore why he says Elisha the prophet of God said to the king of Israel ah I have my ear in the in the enemy's bedroom this is where you move and child of God you must understand this you must develop your relationship with God you must develop sensitivity with God enjoying Psalm 91 like I said earlier it's not about putting the Bible under your pillow or chanting the Psalm a hundred times before you sleep no 
now enjoying Psalm 91 is trusting under the shadow of his wings, is being confident under the shadow of his wings, knowing that sometimes he will relocate you and having a relationship with him that causes you to discern his voice and to be sensitive to his voice and he can tell you what is going to happen. I'm not talking about coming, you know, and telling you this and this and this. No, but you know, there's a certain message you might hear and when you are a doer of the word of God, you are rightly positioning yourself to be protected by him. When you're a doer of the word of God, many of us go to church and we just hear the word of God and we scream, yay, we had a good service, you know, and we leave. But God says, no, position yourself rightly. Be a doer of the word of God. And when you are a doer of the word of God, you are changing your location. And the enemy might have made a plan for you, but he is so frustrated because you are not there anymore. You are not there anymore. Thank you, my father. Thank you for the, for the, for the shadow of your wings. I will always find my protection under the shadow of your wings. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my Father. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Edged Sword Teaching Seminar with Pastor Nkechi Ene. You've got to understand that your name is in the finished job report of Jesus. When he said it is finished, he referred to you. On Thursday the 19th, Friday the 20th, and Sunday the 22nd of March 2020 at 6 p.m. on Thursday and Friday and 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. on Sunday at the Carpenters Church Greenville of Ajipo Iwafe Road, Malfo, Rumeme, Port Harcourt. We'll take you this way till you get to the School of Christ, where you learn that you can only be justified by faith and the law itself cannot justify you. Makairo moments. You don't want to miss this. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow, and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Fresh Dew TV, and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Fresh Dew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website, www.freshdew.tv. Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.